Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to demonstrate the latest results of our inquiry, uh, of our survey studying the situation um, <clears throat> of colorectal cancer screening in Europe, a topic which is, um, I believe, one of the most important in healthcare today. Can you move forward with the slides? Projectionist, go ahead. Next slide, please. Yeah. <clears throat> well, what you see here is um, stems from a new EGF publication. And uh, no, no, please go back. OK. And it shows that in the year 2003, there were striking differences in the five-year survival rates of colorectal cancer in Europe. I've just um, randomly selected some countries uh, which belong to the previous Eastern European <coughs> group, Estonia, Poland, and Slovenia, Slovakia, and you see that in 2003, uh, the five-year survival rates were strikingly different if you compare them with the Netherlands, Denmark, Sweden, and other Western countries. I'm sure that has been changed or is changing now. Now our survey, <coughs> European survey, was answered by <coughs> gastroenterologists mainly and also by some health officers like Nea Malila or Julieta Petnik from Finland and uh, the United Kingdom, respectively. These names to whom I very grateful will be mentioned in the publication, which will hopefully appear soon. Now, one of our questions was, is there a national guideline on colorectal cancer screening in your country? And if we have a look on major Europe, that means uh, uh, of the 40 countries representing the whole of Europe, already 21 <coughs> have already defined a guideline through their active gastroenterological societies. I'm sure there are some painful gaps here that they will f be filled soon. Now, <clears throat> if you look at EU members, 14 out of 27, over 50% have already their guideline. Question, uh, is uh, colorectal cancer screening established in your country? The answer of the whole Europe was yes, and 38% are doing already <coughs> colorectal cancer screening, and among the EU members, it's almost 50%. And that's a, these are the countries in red here. You see that uh, practically more than, far more than half of the landmass of Europe is already <coughs> performing some screening. Some other countries, the remaining rest of the countries, is planning already or is discussing colorectal cancer screening. <clears throat> and you can see here that planning in these countries is perhaps advanced in others where it is being discussed. <clears throat> there may be different health priorities at the present time. It is a great pleasure to see that Colorectal cancer screening practice in Europe is now <clears throat> merging like oil on water. For instance, yesterday I've heard from Iceland that, uh, from us, Gaia Theodos, that uh, the Icelandic parliament has passed a, a law <clears throat> uh, only a short period ago which uh, enables the colleagues in Iceland to perform, um, to perform colorectal cancer screening. Now, <clears throat> what are the primary tools of colorectal screening in your country? Here are the answers. There, is, there are two groups. Uh, the primary tool is, col is colonoscopy, or G-O-F-F-O-B-T. And in fact, both of them are offered, and the population can choose whether they want to have uh, their screening by the hemocult test or by colonoscopy. <clears throat> um, colonoscopy, sigmoidoscopy, and the GOFOBT is offered in regions in Italy, and uh, as you will hear later on. This is done on a regional basis, and Dr. Senyan will demonstrate <clears throat> how it is performed and what the results are. 
A larger group is uh, doing GFOBT, which is uh, in the positive cases controlled by colonoscopy, of course. Here we have Albania, Bulgaria, Czech Republic, Finland, France, Hungary, Slovakia, and the United Kingdom. What are the age limits of the target group here? There is no, <coughs> no uh, unequivocal um, answer. You see that um, Germany and Poland screen their population between 50 and 65 years. In Germany, it's a little bit complex because between 50 and 55, only the FOBT is offered. With 55, you're, um, you're, you have the right to have a colonoscopy, which can be repeated with 65. Alternatively, you can also have uh, FOBTs in biannual intervals. These countries here offer uh, screening between 50 and 70 or 75 years. This is the upper limit. And in the light of Dr. Brenner's result <coughs> that perhaps uh, um, one colonoscopy or one control is sufficient for a lifetime, that would be a, a good um, <coughs> approach. <coughs> Other countries start with 40 or 50 and have no upper limit. Practically, somebody with 95 could have a screening colonoscopy. Whether this is useful or not is a matter of discussion. And Finns and, and in the United Kingdom, namely England, they are concentrated on this age group, probably for study purposes, because here the probability to identify <coughs> colorectal cancer screening is relatively high. <clears throat> now, what are the reasons for abstaining from CRC screening in your country in those who have no, <clears throat> uh, not introduced screening? The answers were in most of the cases, there is no official recognition that this is really needed uh, or no financial support. <clears throat> In many countries, interesting studies are ongoing. Feasibility studies, one <clears throat> randomized controlled trial, the Nordic project uh, is in the planning. In Denmark, feasibility is done. Norway, I think it has been done already. And um, <clears throat> in Sweden, one is in the planning. The Netherlands perform uh, two studies um, comparing sigmoidoscopy and FOBT. Um, our colleagues from the Netherlands uh, hope that in <clears throat> one or two years from now there will be a pol uh, policy of colorectal cancer screening in their country. Flexible sigmoidoscopy is a topic in Portugal, in Spain, <clears throat> Switzerland. Uh, I have no news. Um, no reply has been obtained from the previous Yugoslavian Republic of Macedonia although we tried very hard to um, receive an answer. Most of the compliance figures um, that have been given to me were perhaps based on estimations, um, <clears throat> uh, like Bulgaria, the compliance is good. We have figures, uh, firm figures from the Czech Republic, from Finland, these are older figures, but I think they have remained more or less identical in the latest calculation. From France, we have also, with some regional differences, which uh, Jean Febre has shown recently with mild differences from these previous figures. Germany and Bavaria, we have participation rates in the FOBT of 20 to 25 percent. We have to do something about it, and something is done already to increase this figure. But we have a participation rate in primary colonoscopy of 10% in four years. So if we continue to collect uh, about 2.5% of the target population in 10 more years, we would have reached 10, we would have reached 30% of the population, which might then uh, move the <coughs> mortality rates even <coughs> more <coughs> down. <coughs> mortality, actual mortality rates in Germany have dropped to 38% of colorectal cancer, which uh, is, I believe, uh, very good value. 
Uh, Italy, <coughs> we have various um, results according to the study. Luxembourg has 10%. Poland, um, we will hear from Professor Regula what the actual values are. United Kingdom, 55, between 55 and 58% in regional studies. Now, <coughs> of I think paramount importance is whether we collect the data we are gaining through this uh, <coughs> nationwide screening, evaluate them, and uh, analyze them scientifically if possible. We can see that Austrians are doing it in two areas, namely in Vorarlberg and Tirol. The Czechs are <coughs> collecting it through one of their insurance companies. Finns have uh, uh, exemplary collection of the data and evaluation. France, Germany, Hungary, Italy <coughs> have at least um, regional collections. Luxembourg is collecting data through uh, the Department of Pathology and the Cancer Center. Uh, Poland has a very good collection of the data and the same is true for the United Kingdom. <coughs> so we can state that 10 out of 13 screening EU members collect and evaluate their screening results. Is there a special program for hereditary and familial CRC screening? This group is of particular importance because <clears throat> this makes up um, 15 in some uh, data collections from uh, the United States up to 30% of the whole group of colorectal cancers. <clears throat> Even if it's 20 or 25 percent, it's a significant number of, uh, of persons, and it's quite clear that we have to do something about it. Now, the discussion is open whether we should have this group included in the guideline on sporadic colorectal cancer, or whether this is a special guideline. Uh, <clears throat> but I think we should, uh, we should pay attention to this group, and perhaps uh, the special program in most countries which is based in universities or centers of genetic disorders is a good solution, but I think <clears throat> the general practitioner and the gastroenterologist has to be included because they are the ones who identify this uh, group of patients <clears throat> and therefore it's not like an ivory tower where these patients belong to, they belong to the practice of gastroenterology. And here again, I can praise only the official program in France because here the, uh, this high-risk group is included. We in Germany have no central funding. We have to complain. And I heard from Professor Steele last year that the same is true for Scotland. And the Nea Malila from Finland says it's not part of our guideline, which <coughs> she has good reasons for. <coughs> Now let's have a look on the <coughs> healthcare expenditures as percentage of the gross domestic product. These figures uh, were taken from Eurostat 2006-2007. And <coughs> this here is a line drawn on the <coughs> average of the um, healthcare expenditures in Europe. And you see this is the group of countries who have established colorectal cancer screening and uh, <clears throat> you see that France, Germany, and the United Kingdom spend a lot of money for health care, whereas this group here um, <clears throat> spends a little less. But we will see in the near future whether through the implementation of CRC screening in their countries, the health care expenditures will rise. I have put a question mark here because we simply do not know whether this will be the case or not. Now, <clears throat> if we have a look here on the on this line we have drawn here between uh, 4.5 and 5 percent of the healthcare expenditures, we can see that still in some countries, here are the Baltic countries and Poland, uh, there is a difference between <clears throat> Uh, the healthcare expenditures and the previous, uh, previous um, location of these countries in Eastern or Western Europe. To summarize, uh, 
we have done a survey among the gastroenterological societies of 14 European, 40 European countries, 39 representatives from GI societies or health officials we pride. 21 GI societies have already defined a guideline, that's good news. 15 countries implemented a screening policy. Among European members, 14 have a guideline, 13 have a screening policy. And this is, a, I think, a promising figure. Would we have done this survey in the year 2000? I'm absolutely sure that these figures would have been much lower than here. And listening to some colleagues in this audience um, and hearing which countries will, in the near future, in the next two or three years, will implement um, not only a guideline but also a screening policy, I'm sure we are on a good way. I've just uh, got a letter from a colleague from the United States uh, <clears throat> um, stating that the Democrats in the House of uh, um, <clears throat> Congress have brought upon um, a new law which uh, will include much larger population groups for colorectal cancer screening, including colonoscopy, uh, than at the present time <clears throat> um, are able to do so. And I think the message that colorectal cancer screening can save many lives um, is, uh, has to be brought upon much stronger. And I'm very grateful to hear from our friends from Slovenia that they uh, intend to do a conference like this to push pressure on the European uh, community, on the European Parliament, and uh, <clears throat> also the Commission <clears throat> that this topic of colorectal cancer screening will remain on the table. There will be more discussion today on the primary tools, whether this uh, which should only be FOBT or whether colonoscopy has a place as a primary tool. Um, <clears throat> and we have to work on those countries uh, who abstain at the present time because of a lack of government uh, recognition or a lack of funding. And I think here you, European solidarity is asked, and we have to do something about it to assist those countries that uh, colorectal cancer screening in these countries will be possible. Thank you very much. Thank you.